Hi guys, it's Asia. For this video, I've analyzed one of the trickiest types of questions in IELTS listening – multiple choice questions. I'll tell you about the patterns that I could see in practice tests and the five steps that can help you to find more answers. There will be a few questions for you to practice, so please count how many you answer correctly. Okay, let's get started! Multiple choice questions look like this. Choose two letters from A to E. Or choose the correct letter A, B or C. The questions we're using today are from Cambridge practice tests. These are the best books because they are written by the same organization that creates real exam papers. Number 15 is the most recent version and in July 2021 we're gonna get number 16. I'm gonna link these books in the description. Now let's talk about patterns. IELTS listening consists of four sections and each section is more difficult than the previous one. It seems that multiple choice questions are usually placed in parts two or three. Part two is a monologue, a speech given by one person. And here, if you get multiple choice questions, options are either short, one or two words, or medium in length, but not too long. So these questions are a little bit easier than multiple choice questions you get in the third part. The third part is a dialogue, usually between two students or a student and a teacher. And here options are long, so there is a lot to read and as a result these questions are more difficult. There are two types of multiple choice questions. Let's have a look at each type, try to solve some practice questions, and I'll tell you about the strategies I recommend. Okay, so the first type says choose two letters from A to E. So in this type of question, you are gonna have five options and you need to choose two correct answers. And usually these questions come in a set of two, so five options and five options. So sometimes options are short, sometimes they're a bit longer. Uh, let's have a look at the question with short options. It seems that when options are short, all keywords are paraphrased. So here is an example. Here is our question. Let's read it first. Which two activities that volunteers do are mentioned? Decorating, cleaning, delivering meals, shopping or childcare? Okay, now listen and find two answers. Volunteers can do all sorts of things depending on their own abilities and interests. If they're supporting a family that's struggling, for example, they may be able to give them tips on cooking or recommend how to plan their budget or how to shop sensibly on their income. They might even do some painting or wallpapering, perhaps alongside any members of the family who are able to do it. Or even do some babysitting so that parents can go out for a while. Okay, uh, let me show you the script and let's discuss this question together. So here is what you've just heard. Volunteers can do all sorts of things depending on their abilities and interests. If they're supporting a family that's struggling, for example, they may be able to give them tips on cooking or recommend how to plan their budget or how to shop sensibly on their income. So far, we don't recognize any of the options. Let's continue. They might even do some painting or wallpapering. Okay, have a look here. 
some painting or wallpapering. And that is decorating, right? The meaning is the same, so that's our first answer. Perhaps alongside any member of their family who are able to do it. Okay, that's not interesting. Next. Or even do some babysitting so parents can go out for a while. Do some babysitting. And that is childcare, right? These are synonyms. So that's our second correct answer. And as you can see in this question, all options are short. So they are paraphrased. They are not repeated when you hear the recording. Now let's have a look at the same exact type of question, but with longer options. Here is what you should do. Well, first of all, look for keywords and try to memorize them. It will be easier for you to navigate. If you take your exam on paper, you can underline those keywords. If you take a computer-based exam, you will have an option to highlight any words, but I find that it takes too much time and it actually distracts from listening, so I don't highlight anything at all. And I would say that it's a little bit more convenient to solve this particular type of questions if you take your exam on paper. Bear in mind that some keywords are paraphrased, but some are not, and you are gonna hear the same exact word in the recording and see in your question. If you hear that a certain option is incorrect, cross it out straight away, because they're not gonna talk about it again. What is this incorrect option? This is a trap. Basically, they mention the keyword, but some of the details are wrong, and so the whole option is wrong. So cross them out. Okay, here is the question. Let's read it together and find keywords. Which two ways that volunteers can benefit from volunteering are mentioned? So how volunteers can benefit? Let's read the options. Learning how to be part of a team. I would say the key word is team. Having a sense of purpose. Realizing how lucky they are. Improved ability at time management. Boosting their employment prospects. Now, please listen to the recording and find two correct answers. The benefit from volunteering isn't only for the people being helped. Volunteers also gain from it. They're using their skills to cope with somebody's mental or physical ill health. And volunteering may be a valuable element of their CV when they're applying for jobs. Employers usually look favourably on someone who's given up time to help others. Significantly, most volunteers feel that what they're doing gives them a purpose in their lives. And in my opinion, they're lucky in that respect, as many people don't have that feeling. Here is our script. Let's read it together. The benefit of volunteering isn't only for the people being helped. So this sentence shows us that we are about to hear our answer. Volunteers also gain from it. They're using their skills to cope with somebody's mental or physical ill health. And volunteering may be a valuable element of their CV when applying for jobs. So look here. A valuable element of their CV when applying for jobs. And we have boosting their employment prospects. So boosting is improving their employment prospects or a valuable element of CV, which would boost their employment prospects, right? So all words are paraphrased, but the meaning is the same. So this is one of our answers. Let's continue. Employers usually look favorably on someone who's given up time to help others. Next. Significantly, 
most volunteers feel that what they're doing gives them a purpose in their lives. Okay, a purpose. We actually have this word. Here it is. It's one of our keywords, purpose. Now let's compare if the meaning is the same. Having a sense of purpose or gives them purpose. Yes, the meaning is the same and the keyword is not paraphrased. It's an exact match. So that's our answer. But let's continue reading just in case. And in my opinion, they are lucky in that respect, as many people don't have that feeling. Lucky. Again, we have this word, lucky. Let's compare if the meaning is the same. Here it says, in my opinion, they are lucky. But our option says, realizing how lucky they are. So this option means that volunteers consider themselves to be lucky. But here, the talker, the person who gives a talk, considers them to be lucky. So the meaning is different, you see? So that is not a correct answer. That's a wrong answer. And that is a so-called trap, where meaning is quite similar but different. And the keyword matches. So be careful. Let's read the next question. Which two things does a speaker say about the castle feast? I would say the key words here are the castle feast. They will help us to locate the correct place in the recording and start looking for our answers. Let's find keywords. Visitors can dance after the meal. Dance. There is a choice of food. Visitors wear historical costume. Knives and forks are not used. The entertainment includes horse races. Now, please listen and find two correct answers. If you'd like to go back in time, there's the castle feast on Saturday evening. It's held in a 12th century castle and you eat in the great courtyard with ladies in long gowns serving your food. You're given a whole chicken each which you eat in the medieval way, using your hands instead of cutlery. And you're entertained by competitions where the horseback riders attempt to knock one another off their horses. Then you can watch the dancers in the ballroom and join in as well if you want. OK, so now if anyone has... Let's read the script together. If you'd like to go back in time, there is a castle feast on Saturday evening. Castle feast. Okay, we know that we're listening to the information about our question. It's held in the 12th century castle and you eat in the great courtyard with ladies in long gowns serving you food. Okay, long gowns. That's similar to historical costume, right? They were long. Let's check if details match. Visitors wear historical costume. But here we hear that ladies in long gowns serve food. So they're waitresses. That means that this answer is incorrect and we can cross it out straight away. Next. You are given a whole chicken each. Let's look at option B. There is a choice of food. A choice. But here, there is no choice. Everyone gets a chicken. So again, this option is incorrect. Next. Which you eat in the medieval way, using your hands instead of cutlery. Okay, cutlery. That's knives and forks. But actually, even if you don't know this word, you can still hear using your hands instead. And forks and knives are not used. So the meaning is the same. That's a correct answer. That's the first correct answer. Let's continue. 
and you are entertained by competitions where the horseback riders, mm-hmm, horse, and here, horse, horseback riders attempt to knock one another off their horses. And here, the entertainment includes horse races. And races are where horses run very fast. But here, riders attempt to knock one another off. So these are not races. Again, this answer is incorrect. And the last sentence. Then you can watch the dancers in the ballroom and join in as well if you want. Dancers. We have dancers here. Let's check the details. You can watch the dancers and join in. And here, visitors can dance after the meal. Yes, they can dance. So there is a match. There is a little bit of extra information at the end that it happens after the meal, but in the recording, there is no such information. However, there is no information that contradicts. That's the most important thing. So everything we know matches. And that is the correct option. The second type of question is, choose the correct letter, A, B or C. Here you have three options and need to find one that is correct. The number of questions varies between two and six. When you get these questions in part two, options are shorter, but in part three, there will be a lot to read. So let's use several questions from this part to practice. But first, I want to give you some strategies. As it's part three, you're about to hear a dialogue. Do your best to read all the questions and options before the recording starts. Use the time for revision at the end of part two and time for instructions to read and find keywords. Answers to some questions depend on certain details in the question itself. So pay attention to reactions and attitudes in questions, such as he was surprised by, they agree that, or she finds interesting that. Find keywords in options, they will help you to locate the option that is being discussed. Underline them in a paper-based exam. And again, look out for traps. Two or even all three options will be discussed in the dialogue. When you hear the keyword, don't rush to mark this option as correct. Listen to details. If these details are wrong, cross out this answer. It's incorrect and won't be discussed again. Let's have a look at some practice questions. Here is the first one. You see, all the options are really long. Let's read the question first. What does Trevor find interesting about the purpose of children's literature? The purpose of children's literature. These are our main keywords. So when you hear them talking about the purpose of children's literature, then when you can concentrate on this question and start looking for the answer. But that's not enough. You should really pay attention to every detail in the question. So we are looking for what Trevor, not someone else, but Trevor, finds interesting. So this reaction is very important and you will hear why later. Now let's read the options. The fact that authors may not realize what values they are teaching. So the key words are values. They may not realize what values they are teaching. Next, the fact that literature can be entertaining and educational at the same time entertaining and educational, I would say. The fact that adults expect children to imitate characters in literature. So it's about imitating characters. Now please listen to the recording and try to find the correct answer. 
OK, well, as you probably know, it's a one-year course. It's divided into six modules, and you have to take all of them. One of the most interesting ones, for me at least, was about the purpose of children's literature. You mean whether it should just entertain children or should be educational as well? Right, and whether the teaching should be factual, giving them information about the world, or ethical, teaching them values. Mm. What's fascinating is that the writer isn't necessarily conscious of the message they're conveying. For instance, a story might show a child who has a problem as a result of not doing what an adult has told them to do, implying that children should always obey adults. Oh, I see what you mean. OK, here is our script. Trevor says, OK, well, you probably know it's a one-year course, it's divided into six modules, and you can take all of them. One of the most interesting ones for me, at least. Mm-hmm, interesting. So, that's the word we read here. Let's concentrate. One of the most interesting ones for me, at least, was the purpose of children's literature. And here we see the exact match. Look at the question, the purpose of the literature. Now we know that we are about to hear our answers. And we see interesting here, interesting. But actually, we are looking for what he finds interesting about the purpose. And so far, we've only heard that he finds the whole module interesting. So that's not our answer. Let's listen further. Stephanie replies, you mean whether it should just entertain children or should be educational as well? Entertain children or be educational as well? And let's look at our option B. It should be entertaining and educational at the same time. You see, the meaning is the same, but we are looking for what Trevor finds interesting. And what we've heard is what Stephanie thinks. And nothing about that being interesting. You see, that is not the correct answer. Let's read a bit further. And Trevor replies, right, and whether the teaching should be factual. So he starts talking about something else. He doesn't say that he finds that option B particularly interesting. So this answer is incorrect. Cross it out. And let's continue reading. So Trevor says, whether the teaching should be factual, giving them information about the world, or ethical, teaching them values. What's fascinating is, mm, look here, what's fascinating. And in the question, we should look for what Trevor finds interesting. Let's listen carefully. Is that the writer isn't necessarily conscious of the message they're conveying. To be conscious means to be aware of, to realize. Conscious of the message they're conveying. And in option A, we see that authors may not realize what values they are teaching. You see, the meaning is the same, even though every word is paraphrased. So that's our correct answer. Let's continue reading just in case. For instance, a story might show a child who has a problem as a result of not doing what an adult has told them to do, implying that children should always obey adults. And our remaining option is C, the fact that adults expect children to imitate characters in literature. So this option wasn't mentioned. And the correct answer is A. OK, great. Here is another question. Stephanie is interested in the pictures module because the pictures module. These are our keywords when we hear them talking about the pictures, that's when we look for an answer. And what we need is, she's interested because, so why is she interested in the pictures? Now the options. 
She intends to become an illustrator. Become an illustrator. She can remember beautiful illustrations from her childhood. I would say remember illustrations. She believes illustrations are more important than words. I would say illustrations and words. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult to uh, just choose one or two keywords because really the whole line gives you the meaning. But just try to memorize what each line is about. I'm very interested in illustrations in stories. Is that covered in the course? Yes, there's a module on pictures and how they're sometimes central to the story. Hmm, that's good. I remember some frightening ones I saw as a child and I can still see them vividly in my mind years later. Pictures can be so powerful, just as powerful as words. I've always enjoyed drawing, so that's the field I want to go into when I finish the course. I bet that module will be really helpful. Okay, so first of all, Stephanie says... I'm very interested in illustrations in stories. Illustrations in stories is the pictures module. Is that covered in the course? So they are talking about our question. And Trevor replies, yes, there is a module on pictures and how they are sometimes central to the story. They are talking about the pictures. Stephanie says, that's good. I remember some frightening ones I saw as a child and I can still see them vividly in my mind years later. And here I can see some words. Remember some frightening ones I saw as a child. And that reminds me of the option B. Remember illustrations from childhood. Let's compare the details so she can remember beautiful illustrations. But here she actually mentioned that she remembers some frightening ones, just the opposite. And that means that the option B is incorrect. Next, pictures can be so powerful, just as powerful as words. And that reminds me of the option C. She believes illustrations are more important than words. And here, the key lies in these words. Illustrations are more important. But she actually says that they are just as powerful, just as important. Again, the meaning is different. Let's continue. I've always enjoyed drawing and that's the field I want to go into when I finish the course. The field I want to go into. That means that she intends to become an illustrator. That's the correct option, option A. But actually, because we've already crossed out B and C, we know A is the correct answer even without finding it. Well done, let's have a look at the next one. With regard to books aimed at only boys and girls, Trevor was surprised Okay, the key words are books aimed at boys and girls. When we hear them talking about it, that's when we start looking for our answer. And we look for what surprised Trevor. Surprised. That's a reaction we need. Now let's read the options. How long the distinction had gone unquestioned. Okay, the distinction unquestioned. How few books were aimed at both girls and boys. Books aimed at both sexes. How many children enjoyed books intended for opposite sex. Books for opposite sex. Please now listen to the recording and try to find the correct answer. What about books for girls and books for boys? Does the course go into that? Yes, there's a module on it. For years, lots of stories, in English at least, assumed that boys went out and did adventurous things and girls stayed at home and played with dolls. 
I was amazed how many books were targeted at just one sex or the other. Of course, this reflects society as it is when the books are written. Here is our script. Stephanie says, What about books for girls and books for boys? Okay. These are our keywords, so they are discussing our question. Does the course go into that? Trevor. Yes, there is a module on it. For years, lots of stories, in English at least, assumed that boys went out and did adventurous things, and girls stayed at home and played with dolls. Okay, so this sentence remind me about our first option, how long the distinction had gone unquestioned. And they say that for years boys did adventurous things and girls stayed at home. But did it surprise Trevor? No, it didn't. He just said that. He didn't say he was surprised. So that's not a correct answer. Next. I was amazed. Aha, uh -huh. amazed. That's a synonym for surprised. That's what we're looking for. I was amazed how many books were targeted at just one sex or the other. Look at option B. How few books were aimed at both girls and boys. And he says how many books were targeted at just one sex. Or how few were aimed at both. And that surprised him. He was amazed. That's our answer. Let's continue just in case. Of course, that reflects society as it is when the books are written. So option C wasn't mentioned at all. Well done. In IELTS listening, you need to switch your attention between listening, reading and writing very quickly. And the less effort it requires you to understand the recording, the better. If you have some time before your exam, start listening to audiobooks in English. They're good for developing your listening skills for two reasons. Well, first of all, pronunciation in books is clear. Like in the IELTS exam and unlike many movies and YouTube videos. Also, listening is a passive skill, so you can listen to an audiobook while you're doing something else, like commuting to work or studies or cleaning your house. I listen to all my books on Audible. When you join, you get any book for free. After one month, you need to start paying a monthly fee, which differs from country to country and gives you access to one new book every month. But if you unsubscribe during the free trial, you still keep your free book. So if you decide to try Audible, could you please use the link in the description box below? You'll get your free audiobook and it will allow me to earn a small commission and buy more books to listen. I'll leave a couple of recommendations there too. Now, to help you memorize everything we've discussed today, let me show you my five steps to solving multiple choice questions. Number one, do your best to read all the questions and options before the recording starts. Two, look for paraphrases. The exact words may not be used in the recording. Number three, pay attention to reactions and attitudes in questions. He was surprised, they agree, she finds interesting. Number four. Find keywords in options. They will help you quickly locate the option that is being discussed. And number five. Look out for traps. If the keyword matches but one of the details is wrong, this answer is incorrect. Cross it out. Okay. So how many questions could you answer correctly today? We had nine questions in total. Please tell me in the comments below. 
Another tricky type of task in IELTS listening is maps. And just like in multiple choice questions, there are two types of maps. One is easier and the second one is more difficult. And you can learn this strategy for both in this video here. So thank you so much for watching me today. I hope this video was useful. Good luck with your preparation and your exam.